Hey there, it's Yang here with another lens review. Today we're gonna talk about the Sony 18 to 105 mm f4 G lens. I bought this lens three months ago for about 500 euros, and I enjoyed using this lens very much. So I'm gonna share my experience with you, how I feel about this lens, and what do I think is good at and not good at it, and the pros and cons before you buy. As I mentioned in my previous review video for Sony 50mm lens, there is never too many review videos in my opinion. We always like to see other how other people like the lens before we buy them ourselves. So even if you already know the specs, it's still fun to watch, at least it's true for me. Anyway, first of all, the reason I got this lens is because I got the Sony a6300 first. Before that, I always use Sony a7, which is full frame body. So why did I get the crop sensor camera? It's like a downgrading. No, I was buying a6300 for its video capability. Sweet, sweet 4K video. If you didn't know, a7 sucks at video shooting. The bitrate is low, the image is soft. Overall, it's just a very unsatisfying for video work. So A6300 is a crop sensor body that creates a problem for me because I didn't get the kit lens for A6300 and I didn't own any crop lens. I have the Sony full frame kit lens 28 to 70 millimeter which translates into a focal length of about 42 to 105 millimeter on the crop camera which is not ideal for daily shoots because the lacking of wide angle range. And also the aperture f3.5 to 5.6 on the kit lens is simply not satisfying. Besides the kit lens, I also have some prime lenses such as Samyang 14mm, 85mm and Sony 50mm. They all work very well on the crop camera, especially the Sony 50mm. Uh, can be very compact and powerful combination with this camera, but I need the wide range without switching lens every now and then. So I looked up on the internet and found the 18 to 105mm G lens. According to the review on YouTube, it seems like a fantastic match for the A6300. It has optical steady shots, which compensate the lack of in-camera stabilization in 6300. It has a wide angle from 18mm, which is roughly equivalent to 27mm on full frame, which is pretty good wide angle. And then it has tele-in at 105mm, which is about 157.5mm on a full frame. Pairing with a fixed aperture f4, it creates a nice bokeh on the long end. And yeah, the internal power zoom function is pretty awesome for just daily video and vlog. I know it may not be the best for filmmaking as you need good manual focus and it's not so common to use zoom in film anymore. But as a hobbyist, it's a fantastic lens for video. So I talked about the pros of the lens, now it's the cons. Uh, first, manual focus, as I mentioned, is not so good. I mean, it, it is meant to be used as an autofocus lens. The focus system is uh, electronic, wired, so it doesn't feel as sturdy when you manual focus it, like the Sony 50mm lens. I don't use the manual focus on this lens at all. Another thing is f4 isn't really fast enough for the wide angle and you know mid range. Bokeh wise, if you if you're not zooming all the way to 105 mm, it's not gonna be very delicious. Also, when you are zooming, you will lose the focus you previously had. So after zooming, you need to refocus, which can be a little annoying. Okay, other than these, I can't really complain much more about it. Considering it's only 500 euros, about 500 to 600 dollars. It's really, really good lens. So now let's just look at some sample shots I took over the past three months from portrait to landscape. I'll show you what it can do. Also, I'll show you some video clips in it. First, portraits. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's not ideal to get bokeh most of the time because if you want to maximize the bokeh, you have to zoom to 105mm, which is about 157mm in full frames term. That will pull you back from your subject way too far to take photos comfortably. And as you may already know, the, the farther away from the subject, the less bokeh you get. So it's a contradictory thing. Uh, so if you want to get good bokeh, you can't shoot full body. You can only shoot like above the shoulder or shoot the head. So that's why I don't shoot portrait often on this lens. Instead, I use prime lenses. 
That being said, it is fantastic lens when you want to incorporate the background into the portrait shot and some lighting on your subject, such as these shots with high-speed sync flash. Here is a shot that demonstrates the bokeh at 105mm at f4. It's really nice bokeh because we have some interesting foreground and background, but you have to stand back a lot. Here's a wide-angle portrait shot with flash. In terms of landscape and street shoot, it is just perfect, ranging from a full frame equivalent 27mm to 157mm. It's all the focal length you would want and you would need all packed up together in this one single lens. As you can see when we zoom in, it is really really sharp. Previously I also did a comparison video between image quality of uh, A7 and A6300. Turns out the crop sensor body image quality isn't any worse than the full frame. It's impossible to tell the difference if you just look at the pictures. Um, so don't worry about using crop lens on crop camera will bring down your image quality if you previously have only been shooting on full frame. And here are some more bokeh examples shot at 105mm and f4. On the video side, it's great lens to shoot daily videos and the zoom is just crazy. I'll show you here with a clear image zoom uh, offered by Sony A6300. I don't know what which other camera also offer this function. It, uh, my Sony A7 doesn't have it. Uh, you can get even more than 157 millimeter. Yeah, when you zoom to 105 millimeter, millimeter, you can still zoom in like uh, two times. In low light situation, it is still a fantastic lens. The focus is not slow at all. In comparison to Sony 50mm f1.8 full frame, it is a lightning fast. I feel very comfortable using autofocus in any situation with this lens. In the end, I just want to mention that this lens also works on full frame bodies such as A7, but if you don't shoot in APS-C mode, yeah, you will see very strange, uh, strong vignetting, especially shooting photos at a wide angle. It, is just, it just looks weird and I don't see why anyone would use crop lens on full frame body anyway. Okay, that's my experience with this lens. I would say I would recommend this lens to anyone who owns a Sony APS-C camera. It is not expensive, it is perfect for hobbyists and casual shooters as well as professionals. I've used this lens shoot event and it works just fantastic. As Tony Northrup once mentioned, this 18 to 105 millimeter almost never comes off his 8, uh, 6500 or 6300, I don't remember, because it's just such a perfect match. Anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Check out my other lens review and uh, yeah, subscribe if you like. Much appreciated. See you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, 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 gentlemen.